Uh, welcome back to an episode, oh, to an episode, to the first episode the of The Final first. Siren. Jeez Louise, I'll tell you what, talk about a little bit of a butt clencher there for a while, yeah. but Freo Dockers 14.993 defeated the Brisbane Lions 10.10.70 by 23 points in front of 40,000 people here at uh, Optus Stadium. I was, oh mate, what a, what a game because look, originally they get out, out of the blocks, four goals scored by Brisbane and we're looking at each other going, oh no, oh mate, close the club, shut it down, <laughs> right, that's it, we're done, let's go to, mate, book the bus. Yeah, look, <laughs> I, I think, I, I said it to you probably quarter time, I said, look, that first quarter reflects the fact that one team has played already and has had an eight day or whatever it is break and the other team is finding its way and obviously two early free kicks which were there to be fair mm. uh which resulted in goals and then the the opportunity for them to to further put scoreboard pressure on and it took us all the way to the end of that first quarter to finally put one through and i think once we started to get the ball on our terms and to get numbers around the contest I thought the the boys really dug in, and from there on in, and obviously putting on, you know, the the nine goal in a row, whatever it was. Uh, yeah, 11, eleven of the next eleven. Eleven of the next uh, twelve. Eleven of the next twelve goals is an absolute clinic and mm. testament to the fortitude of the boys. You're going to talk about it in a second, I'm sure. Marred a little bit by the injuries that, that yeah, we've sustained. Yeah, yep. But again, positives in how the boys responded stuck to the process and I'm sure JLo would be happy with that. Well mate it was look it, it was a really really tough one to start out I think uh, something that probably the fans didn't see and may not have even seen at the ground but you definitely wouldn't have seen on TV was after the third goal was scored Alex Pierce actually went from his backline huddle into the midfield huddle and just spoke to the boys spoke to even the likes of Fifey who is a who is an experienced leader at the club and just you know because the mistakes were coming from the midfield we were very ill-disciplined a lot of uh, free kicks you know even Jono to an extent with that deliberate you know coming from the midfield something that a defender definitely wouldn't have done but look it's it's just one of those things where I, I really love that leadership of Alex Pierce I've always been a big fan of Alex Pierce I thought he was our best player when you know when the when the, go, the, the, the whips were cracking early on and we were under siege you know I'm talking Purple Hearts cool. <laughs> I'm talking Stephen Seagal I'm ass. talking Seagal oh, I'm boy. talking Tommy Lee Jones oh boy I'm talking watching it twice this summer with my missus <laughs> wasn't happy <laughs> anyway uh, but you know Alex Academy Pierce was the one yeah. who who really really stood up at that time and yeah. then from there the midfielders start to get on top you know this, this rotation of Fife, Young Sarong and Brayshaw um, and then you can chuck the likes of, you know, Rasmus and, and Johnson potentially in there. But, you know, getting Brayshaw in as your, your fourth mid, let's call him that, and that his ability to run all day, like he was just breaking blokes at the end. Like he was in the last quarter, he was dominant. But, mate, Caleb Sarong, talk to me about his game. Yeah, look, Caleb Sarong, absolutely sensational. My understanding, my understanding is he has broken the club uh, games, sorry, the club uh, disposal record at 46, uh, two ahead of Peter Bell and uh, Dave Mundy. Amazing. And he had a tag as well for a chunk of that too, and they just yeah. couldn't stop him. But I thought it was just the, the smarts of Caleb Sarong. It's not just the 46 touches, but it's what he's doing with the vast majority of those touches, putting us into open space, holding it for the right option, just making great decisions. And in front of what, 40,000, 40,604 people. <laughs> it, it Awesome to have that record broken by a guy that I've tipped uh, to, to end up being the, um, sorry, the mic's cutting out. No, no, um, it's my headphones. Uh, tipped to be the next um, Doig medalist, potentially Brownlow medalist. So yeah, um, fantastic. And just the, the way in which he, he dug in, I thought, okay. set the midfield up. Well, obviously the reigning Doig medalist as well, Caleb Sarong. So, look, fantastic by him. 46 touches. I actually uh, may have said that his touches were a little bit wasted in the first quarter, and then I kind of went back on my word, ate my word. So, yep. uh, happy to apologise to Caleb Sarong from our, our Dockers chat. <laughs> the Dockers boys will know about that. But, look, I think as well, we've got to mention guys like James Aish moving yes. into the back line. Yes. I was always a bit, big proponent of him being out on the wing and giving us that drive on the wing. But his smarts, his attack on the ball, you know, every now and again... Um, 
um, you see James H and you go, oh yeah, he's out there playing. And then you're like, well man, James H has done five, six, seven things really well. I thought Carl Warner, despite getting knocked out, he, he had the ball on the string there for a yes. while. He was looking really good. And then unfortunately he's, um, he's obviously got injured. Um, you know, and that really, really crucial blow. And yeah. it's just two blokes going for a footy. Yeah. You know, it's nothing, no malice in that complete accident. Um, you know, you roll that into Amazing. roll that into Oscar McDonald, who is looking really good down the back line. Um, him hyper extending his knee. How long he's going to be out for? Well, who knows? And then, of course, the backup. Well, not the backup plan, but the guy who's probably going to move into the back line. Yeah. Given that, you know, he's coming off a broken leg, and unfortunately, it looks like Brennan Cox has done quite a bad hamstring. Yeah. And that's that's really really a yeah. a little bit of a thorn in the side because I guess it's going to test our depth. I think our depth's in our midfield, not necessarily. You know, no one's really got depth in key position players. Does that mean Hugh Davies comes in? Does that mean uh, um, a Josh Draper comes in? Do they decide maybe of us to go, all right, we're going to bring in a uh, maybe another Ruckman and play Jackson up forward so Walker then we can shoot someone comes back. back. Walker comes back, of course. Um, he's ahead of schedule and looking really, really Alpha's good. Alpha's Chappie away. Yeah, I mean, look, all of these There's questions. all these things that we can talk. And look, with Chappie, I don't know, I kind of, with hamstrings, it's it's really tough. But yeah, there are, there are the options that the Dockers have. Um, we know we've got a lot of young guys coming through that are good footy players and and I think won't shy away from stepping it up on the big stage. Yeah. Um, so look, where we we see how we go. We go to the well. We play North Melbourne. Um, big game next week again. I think it's about ten thirty a Saturday morning. Classic Saturday morning special. Yes. Uh, before the pubs are open. But yes. Look, it, it'll be really interesting to see how we go. But the 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 thing that it comes from is that midfield. I think with Dogger Jackson in the guts, I'm massive, massive proponent of him in the guts. He looked awesome again. Um, with Fifey getting back to his, not quite his Brownlow form, but, you know, he's never going to get back to that anyway, but Fifey was great. Brayshaw, Sarong, Young, all really different players that can bring different stuff, and it just really started to work, and we came across a a Brisbane midfield, yes, they were missing Lockie Neal, but they're still a good outfit. Mm. You know, they're still a grand finalist. They're they're Mm. one kick away from winning a flag last year. Yeah. So, you know, this isn't a a, a team that is just a bunch of easy beats. Yeah, look, I I think so as well. I I agree with what you're saying. Sorry, the the reason why I smiled before was, by the way, not to do with the injuries. Someone randomly walked across there when she was told not to. That's why I (laughs) smiled. Um, But, yeah, in terms of um, what we've got coming up and, and certainly who we're playing, you can only play who's in front of you. And I thought early on, I thought, oh, a bit shaky. But obviously, like I said, we, we've dug deep and, and the boys got us through. One of the things I'd like to talk about, Dark, and, and I'd like you to, to chime in as well, potentially could call this the, uh, the crypto moment, which is, you know, Switkowski and his ability to bring not only the other players into it, but bring the crowd into it. When, when the game needed something and he had that diving smother, like the, to, to bust a gut from just the wing and then to dive and make that smother really did turn the tide in my opinion on the crowd getting into the game of that they're waiting for something to get into and i thought that was sensational yeah so i think our our crypto.com moment of the the game was the swickowski smother i think that was something and they're the ones the one percenters that you you don't see on the stat sheet on your in your um, monday's west that you just go bang how good was that and how much does it get the crowd up and about i think it, as much as we want to play entertaining football at its heart Fremantle football club is a blue collar get down in dirty and get in and do those one percenters it's all about hard work effort and and that thing that you know you do the things that make the person next to you jobs easier mm. you know you are willing to commit your body on the line to make everyone else's job easier and i think you know switter you I, know, I, I, I felt for switter i was like he hasn't got his mate schultz out there because they, they always came together as switter and schultz you know and you kind of said him in the same breath but switkowski was awesome and, and that effort to smother and really get the crowd up and about and it was a part where you know they had a chance to to go back and enter inside 50, I think, again. Mm. And it just really, really put the brakes on. And for a guy who's playing half forward to do that, yep. to come down the ground, get involved, and hit it. I think that was our crypto.com defining moment of the match. And look, on top of that as well, Doug, normally you can really pick out where you've got those people who 
go out and do two efforts, three efforts, because they stand out. But because there were so many Frio players that were just hungry for it and doing the second and the third efforts, it was really hard to pinpoint so many you know, individual efforts because you had all of those players diving in, which is exactly what you want. So I thought the pressure around the contest was sensational. Um, and, and Switter brought it early, which is great, and was the exemplar for it. But then I thought other players also came to the mix as well. Andy Brayshaw with his two-way running is just amazing again. All right, guys, uh, we'll go to a break. When we come back, we'll have John Miss and Josh Tracy. And we're joined by two of the three Triple J. And uh, Jai and Josh, an absolutely sensational start. Obviously, hearts and mouths early on, um, where we gave away a couple of uh, early, early goals. But, you know, we want to make it interesting. And uh, ultimately came back. And guys, from your perspective, tell us what it was like working back into the game. And then particularly with yourselves and how you guys played, like really getting on the front foot and giving us that spearhead that we needed in attack. Yeah, I think it was just a, um, a fight and, a, and an understanding in each other not to panic. Um, especially us, we, we didn't have the supply early and we understood if we just kept showing up, kept playing to our strengths, that things would start to fall out of the way. Keep working hard, keep chipping away and it was going to turn. And uh, fortunately enough, it did. Nice. Um, Joe, just to you for a start, mate. How's the knee slash ankle ran into the goalpost? Yeah, no, all good. I just got a bit of a shove into the goalpost, but yeah, feeling all right. Nice. And how do, you, how do you go about like your mindset in regards to like, you're a guy who doesn't touch the ball a lot, but you're, you're I mean, you're, your objective is to kick goals. You know, you're there to kick goals. So how do you keep that mindset of like, didn't touch the ball in the first quarter, obviously wasn't coming down much, but... How do you just keep that fresh mindset of, all right, it'll, it'll happen, the, the worm will turn? Um, yeah, it's sort of just my, my trigger. Like, it can be hard sometimes playing as a key forward. And um, like you mentioned, like, you don't get the supply that you want. And you can sometimes feel like you're out of the game. But um, yeah, my trigger is just like, next moment, my time will come. Um, and I think a lot of the boys um, think the exact same. And we know that if we stick to our role and um, yeah, the ball starts coming down there, then we can compete and um, hopefully get a few on the board. Nice. Now, JT, obviously, some of the stats you don't see on the sheet, like making the contest, getting the ball to ground, giving our guys an opportunity to, to get it and move. And I thought, I thought your game was exceptional from that perspective, like always making sure the contest was there. And if you didn't take the clunk, you're bringing it to ground and giving our guys at ground level the opportunity. Did you feel that, that was, the, the ascendancy was really allowing those split 50-50 contests and allowing our guys to get the ball and, and go forward from there? Yeah, it's a really big focus of mine. Um, yeah, it's, the more, sorry, the less Harris marks it and the more we can get it to ground. We knew how vulnerable they were at ground level with our pace in our front half. And, you know, Jai kicking a goal, Sonny kicking a goal, Switter, Freddie kicking a goal, you know, I, that's us kicking a goal. Um, and every little bit I can do to help them kick a goal and help us kick goals, um, yeah, I keep throwing everything at it to to ensure that it's not going back out of over our heads. Yep. Yeah. And how much confidence do you get out of that big tackle that you laid in the in the second quarter? Runcha. Yeah. That like you know kind of. I mean the momentum was always swinging our way, but it just seemed like that was a, that was the next level to get get all the forwards up and about in that forward pressure. Yeah, it's probably another part of my game that I um, really focus on and have pride in. Um, if I'm not getting involved uh, in the air or um, you know on the lead. That's another way for me to get stay involved and follow up and really um, hurt blokes if I can. Yeah, look, I love that. I'm not sure if you've already got it going on, but you should, which is like tackle of the week. Um, and you should claim it and then claim something from someone. Um, and we'd love to see like more like that because the tackle was textbook, obviously led to the goal as well, which is sensational. But do you feel that something like that, like when, when you get that tackle in, it's just the crowds in, it's up and about, do you get that buzz from not only the tackle, but the buzz from the crowd and the buzz from everyone else around? Yeah, to an extent. Um, yeah, obviously it, my, my pressure is very valued down there, as is everyone's. And um, yeah, it's just another opportunity for me to take my opportunity and then really finish my work and then, then celebrate. Um, yeah, it's always make sure we tie for work first, then celebrate. <laughs> That's it. Now, Joe, just a quick one. 
Josh in the in the last quarter had one where he could have given it over the top to you and it, it came off the side of the boat it looked like or were you having a shot what was happening? I think you were going for Coxie I was trying to do a little outside work for <laughs> get Coxie into it <laughs> he trying to just because Coxie well unfortunately looks like he's done quite a bad hamstring but just trying to get Coxie back into that forward mix I guess get him uh, get him up and about yeah. but any words you said to him mate like no not really not really nah, I, I initially thought he was going for Coxie so <laughs> I give oh. him that. I give him that nice one earlier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he did. <laughs> couple of couple of goal assists. Uh, question for you, Jai. Is there anywhere on the ground where you don't feel comfortable taking a drop punt? Because I tell you what, mate, it's just like I, I feel if you get if you get it anywhere in fifty, you're just going to drop punt it and nail it. Like you have that supreme confidence just to to kick that. Yeah, I put a lot into my goal kicking routine, and um, we work a lot on it at the club and. JT would have a routine and Switter would have a routine like um, but yeah I just work on it all the time and I know that on game day when I go out there I can trust myself and I don't need to worry about anything else just focus on that um, and yeah it's been working. Nice. Uh, Josh just obviously a little bit of a change up this week in regards to being the backup Ruckman as well how do you go into that and that mindset you know Dog has got to go and be the be the big dog in the Ruck and, and then you've got to back him up how do you, how do you feel about that? Yeah, it's probably another bit of, if I'm not in the game, it's another opportunity to get up the ground and get myself involved. Um, yeah, obviously try and, and be a ruckman to an extent where I can be and, um, and really get a hold of the second ruckman and then follow up at ground level. That's where we feel like we can really, um, you know, have an advantage of me having to play in there. And um, yeah, something I've chipped away at a little bit and not shy of uh, getting in there when I have to and uh, hopefully it's just for a couple more weeks and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> now, a question in regards to JLo's message, like obviously you would have been up and about considering we probably ended up with like five players on the on the field after all the injuries, but like h- how was the, the rooms and what was the, the general message post game from, from the big fella? You, oh yeah, you mentioned really good win, like really good win. We did, went out there and did what we wanted to. Um, but yeah, we're not done there. And next week's another challenge, and we're on the road again. Um, but yeah, the yeah, games after are just going to be challenges that we're going to have to accept. And um, I think this just puts us in a good stepping stone towards a couple more wins. Nice, nice. And obviously, you know that mindset to come back from from four goals down that early early like you know p- p- pretty poor start, unfortunately. Just just side noting into that, JLo signing for the extra year. You guys up and about for that as well. Yeah, I'm sure you would have seen the video. <laughs> it was, um, yeah, quite an excitement. Added a bit of extra buzz to the week of round one. And, um, yeah, he certainly has all of our backings and uh, we'll keep doing everything we can to make sure he's around for longer. Yeah. Nice. Now, look, personal question from me. Feel free not to answer it. But uh, last time we talked, Jai, you were a little smaller. You're bigger now. Who's benching more out of you two? Oh, pretty similar. I, mean, I reckon you've got me a bit. Maybe just, but pretty similar. Cool. And have you found that that's helped you physically, like over the over the break, over the summer, like putting on the extra kegs and that holding up the strength of it. And I say that only because there was a great passage where you've held your you've held your spot. It, again, you don't see it as a on the stat sheet, but you held your spot. You held your man out, and JT got the mark. Like it's stuff like that that I know I love that sort of stuff. But like, do you feel that that's really helped you? like over the off season with your weights and all that sort of stuff yeah definitely and um jt's hit heaps of pbs in the gym i have um dogger has um there's been so many pbs this pre-season and um all the running work and gym work that we've done has put us in really good stead for the rest of the year so um it's gonna be exciting nice <laughs> fantastic all right thanks guys jai and josh seven goals between you boys keep the goals coming fantastic played and and great win for the dockers oh. first out thanks, thanks lads thanks, well done. Well done. Well done.